And we're live. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. And we're having our first guest of 2024, a repeat guest, Omar Madrano. Omar Madrano is the author of Vacation CEO, What If It Did Work, the host of the What If It Did Work podcast, my favorite podcast, I'm biased. <laughs> and also, most recently, TEDx speaker. And a TEDx speaker of what I found on the other side of silence. So Omar, welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. Happy to have you on the Mindset Podcast again. And super happy um, to have you back on as well as a repeat guest. And, you know, and and like above all, like I'm grateful for our relationship and you reaching out to me. So welcome, man. Dude, I'm, I'm grateful that you want me back on the show. I was Absolutely. grateful the first time. Yeah. The second time means... I must be doing something right that you know, <laughs> I'm I'm worthy and I I'm here to bring it. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's 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 start off by talking about your TED Talk, man. Like that TEDx talk, man. Like you spoke great from the heart and I've always uh I've always admired people speaking on stage and I've, it's always been something that I've wanted to do. So why don't we start there and just be like have you have is that something that you've always wanted to do? Have you always wanted to speak on stage to people, or because I know you already speak on stage to people with like your coaching business and stuff like that, and just when you've you know been at seminars, conferences, and stuff. But as far as a TEDx talk, has that something that always that you wanted to do? That was something that I wanted to do for years, just because I was a guy that could not speak. We, I, I believe we all have a story. I, I believe. That was my destiny to be on that stage, to do that TED talk. And I, yes, I did speak from the heart. It was hard because I'm used to riffing on stage. When, when I'm on someone else's stage, when I'm speaking from the heart, I always ad lib because it's from the heart. But one of the hardest things to do for a TED talk is you have to have a script. You have to send them two, three, four different takes. And that was the hardest thing for me was to be on that stage, not to be on that stage and tell my story because I lived that story. That was my past. I don't use that past to, to cry and play victim. I use my story to say, hey, get up, get on your feet. Like what Gloria Stefan said, we all have a story. Let's hear your story. Let's move the needle. Let's create positive change in this life. That's what that message is about. Yeah. And do you feel like your podcast combined with the books that you wrote and, and doing the Ted talk, do you think all of those things kind of led to you like wanting to come up with that specific kind of a talk? Because it, it's all about finding your voice. It's all about sharing that voice with, with the world. And well, well, my message, my story has always been to find your voice, to release it. Dude, I'm a kid that was in Esau, English for speakers of another language for three years. You know, I was the guy that was so fearful of rejection, couldn't ask out a girl, couldn't live out my dreams, couldn't go for it because what if somebody says no? Think about it. I was afraid that I had nothing to say, that they thought I couldn't speak English. And what that's just a metaphor for a lot of people because a lot of people sit in the back. They're not living their true purpose. They're not living their life with any purpose. They're just existing. They don't realize they're dead. Yeah, sure, they might be 20, 30, but they're not living the life they were meant to be living. God, the universe, whatever you believe in, has given us this opportunity every single day of living a life on your terms, on going out. Dude, like you, congratulations, you got married. Congratulations, you live every day of your life in love, in service. That's the way everybody should live. And, and that's that's the reason why I went out looking. I, I'm like, I need to be on your podcast. Absolutely. And like when I had the opportunity to be on your podcast too, that led me, uh, you know, to kind of share my story too. And like, it's a, it's a big deal. Right. And when we get to do that, when, when, when we have a platform or we share a platform with someone to be able to do that, it's very powerful. And it's like, it can, it can change, you know, if it changes someone's life, like, you know, you're, you know, you're doing it right. And 
you know that you're, you know, you're helping the world, right? You're building my whole mission with this podcast and being on anyone's podcast is to build better human beings, right? Because the world, you know, the world is constantly changing. We're in super uncertain times, more than we ever have been. Um, but one thing that the world has taught us ever since everything that's happened with COVID and everything is just to prepare. We got to be more prepared. And how do we prepare more? Well, we focus on what we love to do. And when we focus on what we love to do, it helps us show up in the best way possible. And it helps us, uh, you know, build the best version of ourselves to show up for those that we love and then those that we want to interact with and uh, touch you know, other people's lives. Dude, there's two things. You can either live in service. There's givers and takers. Yeah. And anybody can take, man. That's why everybody's so victim mode or everybody. Oh, I, I can't wait for somebody to give, to give me my life. Dude, be your own friggin' hero. Write your own story. Create your own legacy. We are writing our own obituaries, as morbid as that sounds. What do you want it to say? Here lies Joe. Man, he knew how to stream. He watched every episode of Stranger Things. He watched <laughs> every episode on Netflix. The guy was on fire. And man, he got a social media following. He had 10,000 likes. He was one hell of a dancer. He would get on TikTok and he would dance away. That's how people are living their lives, man. Such shallow existence, not realizing, man, today is all we have. You said be here at this time. Heck, you know, an old guy like me at 50. Really? No, I, I, I'm up at this time, no matter what. But you could have told me, would you like to be on at 2 a.m.? I would have been on at 2 a.m. I've been on someone's podcast, West Coast married couple and they're like is 12 midnight too late 9 p.m you know pacific i'm like no man it's five o'clock somewhere if it if people can wake and bake if people can do things that pushes them away to, from their goal i can get up on any time to do something that pushes myself towards the person i've always meant to be and to help out others no absolutely and i and i i really appreciate that because you're super flexible and you know, it, you know, you know how it is. It takes time to book the, 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 the guests and get bigger guests. And sometimes it's like, you know, one, two month lag. And that's the biggest challenge, right? Is like, as soon as you stop that, that, uh, those emails and following up with like booking your, your content calendar, then you have to fill in the gaps. Right. So, Always. yeah. Yeah. So dude, I think it's an honor Two things when somebody wants to be on my show and a bigger honor, if somebody wants me on their platform. I don't care if they only have five downloads. I don't care if I'm the first guest. I don't care if they want me to to speak in the, someone's living room. Yeah. Well, hopefully not too far local. Yeah. And I'll do it, man, because it's an honor. Yeah. And let's talk about when, because like on the on our first episode together, you talked about your background in journalism and. And then, and how you wanted to get into sports broadcasting and that, that, uh, that dream didn't work. Um, but the transit, and then when you were a franchise owner with Smoothie King and the challenges that you encountered through that, let's talk about the transition from journalism to franchise owner, but then from franchise owner to sales coach, like your coaching business that you have now. Right. And you built a, you built a really good following and you've got really like, yeah, loyal followers, like you got a, uh, on your Instagram account, on your, your podcast, let's talk about kind of that, that shift in career, right. Going from one extreme to the other, like how that kind of how that happened and, and what made you want to get into kind of coaching, um, and like leading people and, you know, building the movement around what if it did work? Alex, we're all in sales, brother. You sold me. I, I had to sell you to be on your show, you had to sell me to be on my show. The moment people realize that we're all in sales because they're all oh, while well, salesmen are, are people that sell timeshares or use no. cars. No, man, you, you sold your beautiful wife, the dream, the opportunity of creating a life together. It all started with one, one ask. Can I take you out? Hey, can I see you again? Hey, can we be an item? Can we be exclusive? Can we build a life together? All selling 
that we sell every single day. And when you guys have children, they're going to sell it. Alex, dad, get up. I'm hungry. <laughs> By crying and screaming. And selling, there's always a transaction. Either you're selling yourself or you're selling someone else or they're selling you why they can't hire you. Why you can't be on their stage. Why you're not good enough. And a lot of times it's just the fear, the fear of hearing the word no, man. And I lived my life like that for so much. Oh my God, no, 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 no. You know, I can't ask out that girl, you know? Shift that mind shift. Who cares about rejection, man? Go, go into it thinking if she says no, she's going to regret it because I could have been her best date ever. She's missing out, not you. And in the sale... If you're selling something, you're selling something that can improve someone's life. And if you're fearful of asking people what what benefits this provides or whatnot, you're being selfish. Think about it. If somebody had the cure for cancer, there's always going to be skepticism. Even the, if, let's say in this utopian world, they find the cure. But the person held it back because they're too fearful of hearing rejection that'd be the ultimate that that'd be the ultimate screw you that'd be the ultimate selfishness so <clears throat> no is just the simple it's one syllable dude i usually i only speak in two syllables possibly three to try to impress people but one syllable two words two letters no next yeah yeah no i love that yeah so because like for myself like i like for years, I've had this dream of, uh, yeah, building kind of my own platform. And I, and I, and I, you know, it's evolved over time. I never knew it would be podcasting, but I, again, like you, you, you learn by doing, and I stumbled across it after I set up my blog. And when I set up my blog, that's when I'm like, you know, I was testing out writing blog articles and all that kind of stuff about personal development and fitness and health and wellness. Cause that's what I'm passionate about. But then I stumbled across how to make a podcast and by using that anchor app, which is now known as uh, Spotify for podcasters. And that's kind of how it all started. And it's just evolved from there. Um, but like the, just the sheer fact, like the ability that we can interact with, you know, business people all over the world, like is absolutely incredible. And using a platform to to have them on your show and to create your own brand. It's a, like, like you said, it's an excellent way to sell yourself and create your own brand and, market yourself dude before i had a degree of like i said mass communications failed journalists there was no way i could do uh i'd have to go into like a studio like a am or an fm station get a job bag work crappy pay crappy hours just to put out content play some records cds Maybe be a shock jock, maybe be Howard Stern, which there's only one Howard Stern. But now, man, you have a voice. And what what's holding people back, because the average podcast only lasts like nine episodes, is people feel like they want to be Joe Rogan. There's only one Joe Rogan. Just yeah. be the best version of Alex. Be the best version of Omar, man. And just put keep on putting out content. And if you have one listener, if you have two people, three people, hey, you're winning, man. Just keep it going. That's just, it. Just build just from there. the needle. Just build yeah. it, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th this is coming from a guy that owned a retail establishment that was only doing $200 days. I didn't quit because I'm stubborn. We created, my ex-wife and I, we created one of the top selling stores six months, eight months later. So it's possible, but if you fail, there is no possible. It becomes impossible. And then when you fail, you, when you quit, when you quit on yourself, it becomes addicting. You will always, it always becomes easier to quit. To me, quitting is like killing, not, not killing literally, but you're killing part of your soul. You're yeah. killing part of your soul. Yeah. You're killing your dream slowly each time you quit on yourself you quit on your dream yeah no and like 
that that's something for for 2024 especially that you know that that I've been working on too is like I never want to lose sight of the vision right of my vision of like where I want to go because I have the vision the pieces are there the platforms there it's just execute it's just continue to put out content continue to build the brand right and then creating the product or service that'll come because I'm I'm doing a uh, I'm working on affiliate, some affiliate services and products, right. To put, and I'm building a sales funnel right now for the, uh, well, you know, that'll be on the blog and all that. And it's going to take time, but it's like, once I figure it out, I'm telling you, man, like corporate, cor corporate and all that done. It, it'll be to gain. You already have yeah. that spirit in you, brother, yeah. your yeah. mom and dad. Yeah. Dude, yep. it's in your DNA. It's in it's, your it body. has. Yeah, it's been since day one. Yeah. Dude, it's killing your spirit. It's killing your soul because you were born to be an entrepreneur. Your parents were the ultimate warriors, the ultimate go people with gonads, people with courage. Because working in corporate America, is people believe it's safe and it's not, man. My mom worked for corporate America until she was making too much money and she was too old. You know, when you work for yourself, you create your own hours, you create your own schedule. You, the more you hustle, the more you connect, the more money you make. Plain and simple. Man, we live in an age of technology. When I first started as an entrepreneur, do, doing a spinning sign or passing out coupons or paying for for advo drops mail mailers and all that you don't have to do that anymore you can do target ads there's so much out there when i see businesses fail it's not the business that failed it's the owner operator that failed yeah yeah because we have all the resources we have all the tools it's just some sometimes when we're failing it's just we have to re-strategize or we have to yeah do do things from a different angle Exactly. It's it's like a slow death when somebody goes into retail and they they stay there and they'll go, well, I'll build it. I, you know, they will come. You know, since you're in Canada, you know, not not every business is a Tim Hortons. <laughs> not not every business is a Chick-fil-A or a McDonald's. You you have to market, you have to go out there. There is no perfect brick and mortar site. There is no perfect. Every day you start out at zero and you have to wake up every day hungry and wanting to create, create that lifestyle that you wanted. Your, your parents showed you that. And that's why deep down inside you're itching. You can't wait for the day that you never have to work in corporate America again. Absolutely. And when we, let's, let's talk about some of your, um, like upcoming plans or maybe things that you're working towards for 2024. And I know a lot of people are on the same uh, uh, mindset of, you know, you know, we don't do resolutions. We do. Oh, uh, you know, I don't have resolutions. <laughs> if I had a checking call, account, yeah. checkbook, that's the only thing that would change is 23 became 24 and it would probably take me a week or two or maybe a month at my age these days. <laughs> to me, every day is a new day, a new year, a new beginning. God gave me, if I wake up tomorrow after this amazing podcast, I'm reborn again. I start out fresh. All that content from before, that's that's old. I need to find new new guests. I need to find new opportunities. And that's the way you have to do it. Because if it was worth if it was really that important to you, you would have been like, hey, new year, new you. No. And here, I'll, I love giving this analogy. If your brother was a full-blown drug addict, like hard stuff, or he was getting ready to lose his house because he kept on taking out cash advances so he could go to the casino, but it's November. Would you be like, yeah, you know what? Woo! Thank God it's a brand new year coming up. We'll, we'll, we'll wait till January 1st. It sounds stupid, but that's how people live their life. Well, it's, it's October. 
I'll wait till after Halloween and after Thanksgiving and Boxing Day or what else, whatever they have in Canada and Christmas and Kwanzaa and New Year's and Festivus and Hanukkah. There's always something. There's always some excuse on why we can't start. You know, whether it's a challenge, whether it's a 75 day challenge, whether it's going clean for a month and not drinking. It's something will get in the way. There's a birthday, there's a date, there's this, there's that. That's an excuse. January 1st is an excuse. That's why 98% of the people fail. They don't really want to change. You know, they, they see CNN or they, you know, they, they see the ball drop and, you know, they sing that song that nobody really knows the words to. And, you know, it sounds good and it sounds catchy. But if they really wanted to lose weight, they really wanted to get in shape. Think about it. The, the gyms, it's the middle of January and it's already thinning out, man. Oh my gosh, I, I, you know, I don't look like the Austrian oak. Well, how long have you been working? Oh, well, I joined my Globo gym on January 1st because I got a, a deal and I've been on my treadmill or the elliptical. The elliptical lies more than your ex-girlfriend, people. You're not burning 800 calories because you're on that little thing for 30 minutes. If it was that easy, we'd all be shredded. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, uh, it's, it's year, like, you know, day in, day out, month in, month out, year in, year out, like five years, 10 years, like, uh, under your belt. That's when you start really seeing the growth, right? And just the compound yeah, effect. Dude, think, look at anything. I look at my podcast, you know, it's three and a half years old and, well, is it three years? Something like that. I, I lost fingers and toes after 10 episodes or 20 because i've got one of each and i look back and there's improvement I, I was always talking over people i was using fillers i was saying words like and all that a lot and it was more about me than what the guests had to say and each each day gets better and better now granted there can be improvement so much at doing something till father time, like CrossFit working out. I can't hit the PRs that I hit 12 years ago, uh, unless I all of a sudden I started cycling and, you know, the Lance Armstrong cycling, not the, the well, he did both cycling, but, you know, <laughs> but, but that, you know, and you have to have goals, but sometimes you have to pivot. Before yeah. it was, like, yeah. I want to run 42 kilometers. You see, uh, I, I know the metric system. 26.2 miles for the north, for the ones south of the border. I want to, I, I want to hit PRs. I want to have the 135 snatch power lift, Olympic with light width, not, not, not anything bolder. Stuff like that. Once you can't do it anymore because of your body, you don't just throw the the goals out the window. You just pivot yeah. and you change them. Yeah. I, I can't run because I, I have a torn ACL. I don't want to go for the surgery and all that. So do do something else. And, and that's how you have to live life. You know, you're either growing or you're dying. I, I don't work out every day just, to, you know, because I want to film video and content, which... It, it's only uh, my only free time. Sometimes that's why I do it inside my gym or right outside of it. Cause you know, I'm, I'm not like everybody else at a Globo gym. At, I, I know you work out at home, but dude, if you go to a, a, a Globo gym, there's people out there with tripods. Yeah. And it's like, are you serious? Yeah. No, hell no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> And I can imagine, yeah, you know what? They're friggin' Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, like you know, friggin' Cutler. All all these guys, massive guys. I can understand if they're, I'd be like, hey. But it, it's like, and, and it's male and female. It's like, you're, yeah. you're, you're filming content like that. And it's taking you forever between sets. You, you don't even get a workout in. You don't. 
exactly. It never works. No. That that's worse than the person that's sitting on the stationary bike with like a Starbucks frappuccino. Yeah, or having an ice cream. And reading a, yeah. a book. Yeah. That that person's clueless. So we'll we'll forgive them. But if you're out there trying to film content because you know you're on the stairmaster or you you you're on some some machine and, and you're you're barely putting in any work, but you're going to show people that you're at the gym. Great. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to film every time you take a leak? Too go. Hey, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah, like it just doesn't work. Like I I used to do it too because I was into this. Like uh, that was when I started on YouTube. I started with doing like fitness videos and stuff. But my God, when you're trying to do it yourself, like you're trying to do your own filming and try and film your sets and stuff to create like a, you know, a workout series or whatever, whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. It takes like half an hour. And then you realize you haven't gotten to, you haven't even started your workout yet. When when you look at those videos, whether it's the pioneers of Billy Blanks, the Jillian Michaels, the Bob Harper's, the Jake Seinfeld's, all those people, dude, it's a production company. It, it, they're they're do they're doing that all day, yeah. eight hours, nine hours yeah. shoot, yeah, maybe multiple days just to get a 30, 30 minute workout content, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and in all those videos, they always have hot people like behind. <laughs> they, they never have reality like no, the like no. off no. beat, th- yeah. three hundred pounds, like yeah. spreading up a storm. Of course not. <laughs> and, and, uh, have an aneurysm. They never have that. It it all. It's just like, I don't know if you remember, they always had um, Bowflex. Oh, yeah. yeah. They always had like the chiseled chick, guy, perfect looking guy. None of yeah. them had any blemish. They no. didn't have like facial hair, body hair. Nothing. No. Wrinkles. No. They were like 20 minutes oh. or three times. Yeah. Week. And you yeah. can look at this. Yeah. No. They're selling, they're selling such a fallacy. It's like insane. No. Or, or the total body. Yeah. If, if you like working hours at the gym, this machine is not for you. <laughs> but yeah. And the last the last piece, we're, we're down to the last uh, little bit of time here, but the last piece I want to mention was, like you already touched on it, was procrastination. It's the greatest enemy of our goals, hopes, and dreams. What are some strategies that you've, utilized because i know everyone goes through it no matter if you're at the top of your game you're at the peak of or the pinnacle of your career everyone has that you know little voice it's like no you can you can you can skip today you can skip leg day you can you can skip it or oh don't worry you work better under pressure there's nothing better than the last minute that's when your creativity comes <clears throat> my words of wisdom on that live every day with purpose live every day like Shit, dude, this is this might be your last day. Tomorrow's never guaranteed. I'm playing the second half, the second, the back nine of my life. Anything can happen. Anything can happen if you're 20. The thing is, we all think we're gonna live to be like Betty White, George Burns. We're gonna live to be a hundred. You're not. Chances are you're not, man. And, and if you nobody wants to live like that unless technology gets amazing. You know, my grandfather's 99 and a half, and it's like, holy shit, I don't want to live like that. If you live today, you know, you're you're in a fight with somebody, you're 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 in a fight with your husband, with your kids. You might not get that opportunity of saying, I love you. So you're gonna create someone's last memory, a fight, because you know, we we think tomorrow is guaranteed. It's not, man. Time is so precious. Tomorrow's never guaranteed to anybody. Do it, man. Do it when, when you still have the energy. People that keep on saying, oh, I'm still young. I'm too young. Dude, I was your age. Never did I think I was going to be 50. Time goes by fast. When you have kids, I've got a kid that that's graduating high school in four months. It's like, where did the time go? It flies. That's why you have to enjoy every single day. If if we're lucky, 2024 has 366. There's a leap year. Yeah. yeah. Please, to create magic, to create your life. Don't piss away chapters of your life. Do do it now. You know, there, there tomorrow 
Yeah, let me do it tomorrow. Let me do it someday. Someday it always leads to a town called never. Quit lying to yourself. Do it. Do what needs to get done now, man. Whereas my dad says to me all the time growing up, the Nike slogan, Alex, just do it. Dude, it's going to suck tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to suck less because you're younger. Even by a day, you're going to have more energy. You know, our life is like a friggin', you know, sands of time. You you don't, that hourglass, you don't know how much time, how much sands left. None of us do. Yeah. No, we're all, we're all writing our own script and our own story. And we want to, we want to make sure that the chapters of that story are what we want. Cause we, we have, we have the power to change those chapters. You are the writer of your life. You're the mass. You're the creator of your destiny. I read that. So oh, I read it in my own book. <laughs> well, yeah, really appreciate your time on the mindset podcast today, Omar. So happy to have you on. And as the first guest, first guest of 2024, uh, where can our listeners find you? Um, and how can they connect with you and like, which platforms are you the most active on? When it comes to finding me, I'm, I'm like, saint jude i'm the patron saint not of lost causes but of your cause i'm not here chasing money i'm not here waiting to get paid you can fax me you can dm me you can send me an sos morse code whatever i'm i'm available in every platform linkedin facebook heck what if it did work join my group and promote yourself don't i let you promote absolutely did yeah. Work? Yeah. post your content Promote, say hi, do whatever, do that. I'm on Instagram, DM me, DM me anything, any question, but don't DM me two things that I get. People trying to sell me that I look like crap. Yeah, I'm 50. I'm not going to look like 20 and you're not going to make me look like I'm 20. If you had that, you'd be in Beverly Hills or you'd be living in Vancouver. You see? <laughs> and, and two, don't try to sell me crypto Who can, or Forex. Or that you had the cure for whatever bull crap. And you know what? If you get a DM from me on Instagram that says that I'm trying to sell you crypto or Forex, that's a fake account, man. The only thing I'm all, ever going to try to sell you is to live the life that you're always meant to be living. Right on. Awesome to uh, have you on the Mindset Podcast again, Omar. And I'm really looking forward to uh, going on your show again in the near future. You will. You just say you just say when. Yeah. I'll send you the invite. Sounds good. Sounds good. Right on.